Hey friends, it's Barbara Sue. Welcome back to Kowalski Mountain. I am the author of the blog KowalskiMountain.com. So we are at the homestead this week and I thought I'd bring you along and show you what kinds of things that we eat on the homestead. Now honestly, it's exactly like we eat at home. And um, here at the homestead, I cook two meals. I cook breakfast and I cook dinner. And then in lunchtime, we just eat whatever, maybe leftovers, maybe a sandwich, um, whatever we want. Um, but there's no planned meal at lunchtime. So this video is gonna be all about what we're having for dinner this week. Now the one thing about cooking here at the homestead is it takes a lot more planning. I have to make sure I have all of the ingredients with me because I don't have a pantry to pull from. And like this evening's dinner, I already found something that I forgot. It was a spice. And I try to measure those things out in advance. That way I don't have to bring so many spice bottles. And I didn't have it, so I made it without and it's all good. I cook with a variety of homemade things and then also things that I cook from a box. Some we just prefer, some it's just easy. Balance is the best thing when it comes to our cooking. It's really easy to get caught up in the idea that I have to cook everything homemade and it gets discouraging when you can't. And you know what? It's okay if we don't. Now, Philip and I are empty nesters, so I only have to cook for two which has its own challenges, especially after having such a large family for so many years. So come along, I hope you enjoy what it is we have for dinner, and maybe you'll get some ideas of what you can cook at home too. Now our first day on the homestead, I always plan something that'll be super simple because we never know what we might find when we get there that needs our attention. And so I always like to plan something that will be easy to make and we can have a good dinner without a lot of effort. These venison meatballs were made at home. I make a big batch of venison meatballs and go ahead and brown the meat. Once browned, I freeze the meatballs individually. So for the meals I'm preparing, I just pull out a few meatballs. These were baked in the oven to cook them through and added to the sauce. So several of the items on our menu this week include chicken. And these are our homegrown broiler chickens. And if you wanna learn more about raising your own broiler chickens, you can find the video here. These chickens we raised for nine weeks. And this chicken weighed 7.38 pounds. And that's without the wings. Uh, one of the things we do when we butcher our chickens is we, we remove the wings on butchering day. That way we can enjoy chicken wings as a separate meal. Now I have brought one chicken with us on the Kentucky workation. I am going to cut this up and we're going to use it for three meals. Philip and I are empty nesters so we can get three to four meals out of every single chicken and I'm gonna show you how to break it down today. Now these are not my best knives, so let's hope they work okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the skin right here around the leg. And I'm not really cutting into the leg, I'm just cutting that skin. 
And then I'm gonna turn the chicken over and then I'm gonna pop that joint. Now all I did was pop the joint out of place. Now I'm going to separate this leg and thigh from the chicken. And to do that, we're just gonna cut right between these leg, this bone. You notice I didn't cut the bone at all, it's intact, but I cut between it and I'll set that aside. Now we're gonna do the other leg. So we're gonna cut the skin. We're gonna turn the chicken over and we're gonna just pop that joint out of place. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut between the joint. There it is, it's right there. Oops, I actually got into the bone there. I don't need to do that. And there we go. Now, if you wanted to further separate the thighs and the drumsticks, you can do that now. And you do the same thing. You pop the joint and you cut between. I actually will cook these together. Now, because I've already removed the wings, we don't have to do that, but you would do that the same way, uh, cutting around the wing and popping it out of the joint. Now, to separate the breast, I'm gonna try to find that breast bone right there in the middle. And it's best if you can cut as close to that bone as you can. Sometimes this is the part that's a little tricky for me. And this is where a better knife would really come into hand. I'm running that knife down along the edge of the bone. And I really wish I had my good knife. Now this is one chicken breast, and that is a lot of meat. Philip and I actually get one meal for the both of us out of a single chicken breast. So we'll set that to the side. Now it's getting a little tougher because the body is now very tippy. So I kind of have to hold on to it and cut that same way separating the meat from the bone. And I wanna cut as closely as I can so not to waste any of the meat. Some skin there, giving me some trouble. There we go. There you go. And there is another breast, and we'll get a, nut, a separate meal out of this. Now, because I'm not the best at removing the meat closely, I go back over it and I cut off any of the big pieces. Now you can also use this to make chicken broth. You can add the entire carcass just the way it is into your chicken broth. I'm not gonna be doing that this time because uh, we're here on the trip. Sometimes I save the carcasses in the freezer and then when I'm ready, I have some to make broth with. I actually have a pretty healthy supply of broth, so I'm really not in need of doing that. Now I'm gonna trim this up the best I can so not to waste any of this meat. When you grow your own meat, you realize how precious this is and you don't wanna waste any bit of it. So I'll keep picking away at that, but you can see right here 
the amount of meat I got off just doing a quick trimming, um, and that's not even doing a very thorough trimming. So let's kind of look at what we've got here. I've got one full chicken breast here. I've got a second chicken breast there. That's two meals for us. I've got the two legs and thighs, which we usually get one meal out of that. And then any of the leftover trim will be a, could go into a fourth meal. Now, usually there's a little bit of leftover with the thighs and drumsticks. So there will be that, but you can see that this is the chicken um, cut up. Now that my chicken is prepared, I can make my first meal. And tonight we're going to be having Parmesan chicken. Now, as I said, we're going to cut this into multiple pieces for one meal. This one's a little bit thicker, so I'm gonna cut this one here. So that single chicken breast is gonna get me four servings of chicken. Now when I'm planning for a trip on Kowalski Mountain, I always do some prep work at home. So this I've measured with the dry ingredients. This has breadcrumbs um, and a couple of different seasonings, all pre-measured. And I write right on the bag what needs to be added. That way I don't forget. Now I need to add a half a cup of Parmesan. Now, Philip prefers a fine grated Parmesan, and I buy the brand that has no cellulose powder added to it. And I'm going to add part of my Parmesan as this kind of Parmesan, the fine grated Parmesan. Now the rest, I'm going to use real shredded Parmesan. measure that approximately because you need plenty of cheese. All right, so I'm going to add to my cheese the spices that I mixed up at home. And as much as I dislike rewashing Ziploc bags because this was used for such a minor thing, it does get rewashed. So now I'm going to bread my chicken. So first I'm going to dip it into the egg mixture and now into the cheese. You want to coat that really well. Now, I don't waste this cheese and breading that's in here. I kind of sprinkle it over the top. Because honestly, the crunchy stuff in the pan is one of my favorite parts. So now this is gonna bake and we'll get the rest of dinner ready. These fresh potatoes were grown right here at the homestead. One of Philip's favorite breakfasts is called a skillet and it calls for potatoes. 
When the potatoes were partially cooked, I went ahead and reserved some for breakfast the next morning. This one pot macaroni and cheese is a delicious addition to pork chops, one of my most favorite meals. It's easy to mix up with fresh ingredients, which is always delicious. I always serve pork chops with homemade applesauce. Be sure to check the card in the right hand corner to see how I make it. Hey, I hope you can hear me okay. So one of the things I do to make uh, things easy for a quick dinner is that I cook meals in advance. So Philip and I are empty nesters, and so to make something like a lasagna for the two of us is way too much food. So rather than make lasagna in a lasagna pan, I make it in a bread pan. So I made this lasagna, um, the last time I made lasagna, I made three bread pan lasagnas uh, for meals and then I froze them. Now what I do is I go ahead and I line my baking sheet with parchment paper very carefully and then I freeze the lasagna in the bread pan and then after it's frozen I lift it out of the pan I put the pan back in the cupboard and I freeze just the frozen lasagna now before the trip I took the frozen lasagna out of the freezer I carefully unwrapped the parchment paper and I slipped the lasagna back into the same pan so that I could bake it. And I brought that pan up ready to bake. So this is defrosted and it's ready to go. And we're gonna have a good dinner that's easy for us tonight. Now we are actually gonna serve five of us tonight with this little lasagna, um, four adults and one child, but I think it'll be plenty. So I'm gonna get that in the oven. The outdoor oven allows me to prepare meals outside rather than heat up the RV. The other foil packet in the oven is garlic bread. I buy bakery bread and prepare it with garlic seasoning. I go ahead and freeze it into servings and then I pop it in the oven for a quick addition to any meal. Ghirardelli brownies are my absolute favorite. No shame in sharing my favorite secret recipe. Well, friends, that is what we had for dinner this week at the homestead. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It really means a lot to us as we're on our way to reaching 1,000 subscribers. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.